Good morning, everybody. Time is now 9.31 a.m. Uh, this is time and place for our regularly scheduled business meeting. Uh, I call this meeting to order. Uh, would the other commissioners please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance? Flag of the United States of America, the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, justice for all. Indeed. All right. I would note for the record that all five commissioners are present today in the Bollinger Rooms. Therefore, we do have quorum. Uh, this would be the time for public comment. I understand we do have public comment this morning. Uh, we'll start with in the room. Good morning. Uh, my name is Shannon Heim. My name is Shannon Heim. I'm the Director of Regulatory Corporate Council at Northwestern Energy. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you today. Um, I am here to speak on two items on the agenda, both of the rulemaking items that are currently on your work plan. Uh, first, I would like to discuss 2021.01.007, which is the commencement of a rulemaking to implement HB 597. This rulemaking revises the integrated resource planning rules it's impossible to overemphasize the importance of this docket. I, I would say this is one of the most critical dockets that you will have in front of you this year. An IRP provides a roadmap to inform the development of an adequate energy supply to meet customer baseload for the coming years. The plan pre presents an evaluation of different potential generation resource portfolios that could meet the needs of our Montana electric customers reliably, safely, and affordably. Modernizing the IRP rules represents a critical balance of the needs of the utility to plan and the needs of the commission and stakeholders to understand the utilities process, its analysis, and its conclusions. Although the action item before the commission is formally commencing this rulemaking, is that better? I wondered. I'm not gonna start again, I'm just gonna keep going. That's okay. uh, although the action item before the commission is formally commencing this rulemaking, Northwestern would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the hard work and the collaboration that has gotten us to this point. There's been an incredible volume of work behind the scenes that you know, the public generally doesn't see but benefits from enormously. Stakeholders, including Northwestern, MDU, DEQ, the large customer group, MEIC, NRDC, and Mr. Zolnikoff, who was the original bill sponsor, among others, participated in this process. The commission staff held individual meetings, sponsored a workshop, and took multiple rounds of comments. This interactive process did take some time, but the draft rules presented for your consideration today are stronger, and more collaborative for the effort. We also believe that the rules today reflect the efforts undertaken by staff and the stakeholders and staff in particular is to be commended for the efforts they expended. Northwestern appreciates all the work and thought that's been invested to date and we look forward in participating in this docket on a going forward basis. Uh, secondly, I'd like to offer a brief comment on the PURPA rulemaking that may or may not remain on the docket, but I think it's still valid to offer a brief comment on it. That rulemaking is docket 2021.09.118. Northwestern again appreciates all the hard work and consideration given by staff to these draft rules. I would like to highlight one issue and suggest the commission consider alternative language. Currently, draft rule 35.5.1905-2B, quite a mouthful, provides the commission flexibility to choose either an avoided cost of energy established at the outset for the duration of a 20-year contract or to choose to assign the cost of energy calculated at the time of delivery. Basically, the commission, the rules as drafted today, require the parties to litigate that choice in every docket. 
Northwestern strongly urges the commission to take advantage of the tool provided by FERC to choose to set the price at the time of delivery in your rules. This is the ultimate customer protection provision. It means that the QF gets the market price. None of us are guessing. We don't litigate the avoided cost of energy. We don't go around about what are the forward curves. What do we think maybe 20 years from now the market might look like? By requiring the parties to litigate whether or not to set the price of energy upfront or on a variable rate in each docket, the commission is unintentionally increasing the volume and complexity of QF dockets and the litigation. I recognize the commission may ultimately make an alternative finding in the docket, but the evidentiary burden on the commission is higher when it changes its mind once the proposed rules are published with the Secretary of State. Northwestern is as anxious as any party, and I would speculate staff, to resolve this docket and streamline the payment process to QFs. But we urge the commission to use the best customer protection pool tool provided by FERC from the outset and adopt the revision proposed by Northwestern in its comments. We've provided a red line of what we think the, um, the appropriate language should be, and we would urge you to consider that and to take that up front as the best option. Again, we appreciate the efforts of staff and look forward to a continued collaboration. I'm available for any questions um, on any of these dockets or anything else. Thank you, Ms. Hine. Any other public comment from the room? Seeing none, I understand we do have a public commenter online. Yeah, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Mr. Sanger. Thank you very much. My name is Irian Sanger, and I'm appearing here this morning on behalf of the Northwest and Intermountain Power Producers Coalition. Um, I also wanted to comment on the request to open a formal rulemaking regarding the commission's implementation of House Bill 597. NIPSI is a membership-based advocacy group that represents competitive electricity market participants in the greater Intermountain and Pacific Northwest regions, including Montana. NIPSI is committed to fair and open transmission service cost-effective power sales, and fair and competitive markets. NIPSI also appreciates the work that staff and other stakeholders have invested into this proceeding to implement competitive resource selection rules, and NIPSI supports beginning a formal rulemaking regarding the Commission's implementation of House Bill 597. NIPSI believes this investigation is very important and needed because of the utility bias to own resources and the expected billions of dollars in future resource procurements that will ultimately be paid for by Montana ratepayers. The regulatory compact that Montana and the vast majority of state regulatory commissions use um, uses cost of service based regulation that provides utilities with an economic incentive to invest, build, own and own physical distribution, transmission and generation assets, because this is how they earn money and earn returns to their shareholders. In contrast, utilities do not earn profits when they buy power from third parties through power purchase agreements or power contracts. This dynamic is called the utility ownership bias. You and other state regulatory commissions can protect ratepayers and protect against the ownership bias, at least in part, by adopting rigorous competitive procurement rules. Ratepayers deserve to have utilities acquire the lowest cost and least risky generation resource, regardless of ownership. The best way to achieve that result is to ensure that utility plans are tested in the competitive marketplace against independent power producers who are prepared to compete and to build and operate power resources at their own risk. Some of the best practices in competitive procurement rules, uh, which we'll be commenting on later in the formal rulemaking, hopefully, include providing a meaningful opportunity for stakeholders and bidders to comment on whatever draft request for proposal the utility prepares, 
to require the commission to approve the request for proposal in any final resource selection so that you have the ultimate to say. You have a transparent process, including a transparent scoring methodology where the utility bids are uh, judged based mostly on the price, the lowest cost, rather than subjective, what they call subjective non-price factors, and that provide bidders with enough information that they can submit a bid that matches what the utilities and ratepayers need. Where you protect against affiliate transaction abuses and where you have an independent review and monitoring or administration of the RFP. In the end, it is very important for this commission to ensure that there's a truly competitive process that uses the forces of the market to require the least cost and least risk generation resources because Montana investor owned utilities are looking to procure significant amounts of new resources. At this time, NIPSI has no specific comments on the draft rules. We look forward to participating in the formal rulemaking and making our specific recommendations at that time. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your time and I'm available if you have any questions. Thank you, Mr. Sanger. Any additional commenters online? All right, seeing none. Uh, we do have several changes to the agenda this morning. We will be deferring action item number three, which is docket 2021.09.112, Northwestern Energy's annual PCAM adjustment. We will also be deferring work session item number four, which is 2021.09.118. This is commission initiated uh, purple rulemaking to consider the formal rulemaking regarding commission's purple rules. All right, let's move to the action items. Action item number one is approval of the commission minutes for the week of June 27, 2022. Uh, we will be getting to that. Thank you. Um, is there a motion for minutes? We approve the minutes as distributed, Mr. President. I will second. Discussion or changes to the agenda? Or to the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion to approve the minutes for the week of June 27th, 2022, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Seeing no opposition, minutes are adopted. All right, let's move into our work session items. Work session item number one is docket 2021.01.007. It's commission initiated. House Bill 597 implementation to consider beginning formal rulemaking regarding the commission's implementation of House Bill 597. Ms. Gobert. Good morning, commissioners. The purpose of today's work session is outlining next steps in the House Bill 597 rulemaking. In March, the commission held a roundtable discussion. In the months that followed, staff has met with individual stakeholders and received additional comments to further refine the rules. Last week, a draft notice of proposed rulemaking was distributed to the commission for review. I would just note the caption of the draft notice includes ARM 38.5.8227 but it was inadvertently admitted, omitted from the proposed repeal list in paragraph four beginning on page 13. Staff has updated the notice accordingly and recommends the commission approve the draft with that change and authorize staff to make edits as recommended by the Secretary of State. All right, is there a motion? Vice President Johnson. Thank you, Mr. President. Move we adopt staff recommendation with regard to this rule. All right. Is there a second? I'll second. Uh, discussion? Questions? Mr. Fielder? Um, Mr. Chairman, this may just be a technical question, but the staff recommendation is um, provides staff, authorizes staff to make edits recommended by the Secretary of State, and I understand that 
Am I correct to understand that that would be non-substantive, that it's just uh, clerical edits? That would be my understanding. Ms. Gobert, do you want to address that? Mr. President, uh, Commissioner Fielder, that is correct, and I apologize for that omission. Thank you. Questions, additional discussion? All those in favor of the Vice President's motion signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. Seeing no opposition, motion carries. All right, let's move to work session item number two. This is docket 2022.04.050, Missoula Electric Cooperative and Northwestern Energy. We're here to consider the joint petition for approval of an amendment to agreement for provision of electrical service facilities to make a decision on MEC and Northwestern's application. Gilbert. Good morning again, commissioners. On April 20th, 2022, the commission received a joint petition from Northwestern Energy and Missoula Electric Cooperative. The filing indicates that Northwestern and MEC have entered into an agreement that modifies a previous commission approved agreement under the Territory Integrity Act. The previous agreement had set the geographic boundaries of each party's exclusive electric service territory. That territory is now being expanded in a new subdivision near Missoula, Montana. Northwestern and MEC have mutually agreed in writing on which electric service provider shall be entitled to exclusively serve each phase of the each development phase of the subdivision. To ensure the commission could reach a decision based on statutory requirements, data requests were submitted to the parties with both parties responding in good faith with helpful information and analysis. Staff has reviewed the filings and believes the information provided is sufficient for the commission to make a decision in this docket. Staff recommends approval of the amendment. Thank you. Mr. Fielder. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I move to adopt, uh, I, excuse me, I move to approve the joint petition of an amendment to the agreement for provision of electrical services between MEC and Northwestern Energy. Is there a second? I'll second the motion, Mr. President. Motion has been seconded. Discussion or questions? Uh, Mr. President, I, I did look through the, the docket here and I find this be a new subdivision within my district. It makes sense that the uh, parties have agreed to a boundary that would prevent duplicative um, and uneconomical services. So I think this is a fine amendment to the agreement. Thank you, Mr. President. Additional discussion or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of Commissioner Fielder's motion signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. Seeing no opposition, motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Ms. Gobert. As noted, uh, work session item number three, which is DACA 2021.09.112 has been deferred. So too with work session item number four, which is DACA 2021.09.118, that has been deferred. So we'll move to work session item number five. This is DACA 2021.12.13, Cadence Beaver Creek, also known as CBC3, to consider motions for reconsideration from CBC and Northwestern, Mr. Hamilton. Thank you, Mr. President and commissioners. Uh, in your meeting materials, you should have the motions for reconsideration that were filed by Northwestern Energy and Caitness Beaver Creek in this matter. And beyond that, you'll have uh, no staff memo, no draft order for your consideration. And the reason for that is because we have received additional motions uh, from the parties in this docket. And I'll run briefly through the uh, uh, procedural history here of the timing of those motions uh, and ultimately land on the staff recommendation here, which is to defer uh, consideration of the uh, motions for reconsideration for today to address them at the commission's next business meeting, which due to uh, planned NARIC event next week uh, would be July, excuse me, yes, July 26th. Um, so, as I mentioned already, you'll have the motions for reconsideration. Both of those were filed on June 27th. On June 30th, Northwestern Energy submitted its compliance filing. That was the calculation of the avoided costs pursuant to the commission's order. 
On July 1st, CBC filed its motion for leave to reply to Northwestern Energy's motion for reconsideration. That motion for leave also included CBC's responsive brief to the uh, motion for reconsideration from Northwestern Energy. On July 7th, Northwestern Energy filed its response to CBC's motion for reconsideration. I believe that that was uh, noticed in Eddie. In other words, you should have received the notice of the filing of that in Eddie just this morning. It, I believe it must have gotten hung up somewhere in the Eddie process. Um, additionally, on July 7th, CBC filed a motion for Northwestern Energy to produce the work papers associated with its compliance filing um, so that it, so that CBC, uh, as CBC represents, can check the work, uh, check the math of Northwestern Energy. Given this additional briefing and the additional motions, uh, staff believes that it's prudent for the commission to consider all of those briefs uh, completely before acting on the motion for reconsideration excuse me, motions, multiple motions for reconsideration in this docket. And therefore we would recommend that the staff defer consideration of this work session until July 26th. Be happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions from Mr. Hamilton? Any objection to deferring this matter? All right, we'll go ahead and defer this matter to the business meeting of July 26, 2022. Thank you, Mr. Hamilton. All right, let's move to work session item number six. This is the ready phase three kickoff. This is commission initiated to introduce the ready implementation vendors to the commission during the kickoff of the phase three of this project. Commissioner Fielder. Thank you, Mr. President. I have the our ready project manager come to the table as well. And we've got uh, representatives from the developer side here. I'd like to begin with just a, a brief um, background on what brought us to today and then we're going to have our project manager introduce our development team and uh, they will talk a little bit about the project. We are going to keep it somewhat brief here for this meeting, just an overview and a preview of what we're about to um, see and uh, how the project is, is structured. And then after the commission meeting, we will um, have about a 10 minute break after adjournment before we reconvene here for some uh, additional deeper dive planning and a review of what this uh, project's going to entail and look like. We encourage all of the staff to be here for that meeting. There will be refreshments served. We have invited um, external stakeholder representatives that use Eddie frequently to come and uh, share in this information as well. So um, I just wanna go back a little bit in time and that is that this uh, for this commission, the currently seated commission, the Ready Odyssey began in January of 2021. And we had a major question before us, and that was um, we knew that there were significant problems with the EDI system, the electronic data and docket information system that the state had built. But um, we weren't certain whether that could be repaired, or whether, it, whether it would be economical to repair it, or whether we should be looking at replacing it. So. Um, as we explored that uh, and worked with our legislative budget committee, we were um, given um, the green light to go ahead and look externally beyond state I ITSD capabilities and see if we could find something more suitable for the agency, perhaps something similar to what the Supreme Court was using. Uh, we looked at those systems and developed an estimate and our estimate at that time in the first quarter of 2021 was $1.9 million and the legislature appropriated those funds to us, or at least they thought they did. There was a technical bill drafting error, which ended up being uh, resulting in about a million dollar shortage on that appropriation, which the committees acknowledged was uh, an error, not, not intentional. Um, but we, we proceeded with what we had and hired our project manager, software analyst in, he, he came on board November 1st of last year. That's Mr. Spiropoulos here, who will take the, the calm here in a moment. And he led us through the discovery phase, um, looking at um, examining the eddy functionality and the dysfunctionality of it, identifying what the PSC needed, uh, looking at our workflows and doing shadowing of staff as they use the eddy system and as they use other types of workarounds um, where eddy was falling short. And he issued a preliminary report to this commission that we adopted on January 25th of this year that said, we should not try to repair Eddie. We should move forward with um, replacing it entirely. 
And the commission concurred in that recommendation. I will note that was an independent assessment from the outside. Um, although I believe our staff uh, and commission all concurred in that decision. And we moved into phase two, which was to identify the necessary functions of the new system and create a statement of work. That was a, an intensive uh, process. And that document specified the system requirements and we put it out uh, in a request for proposal or excuse me, a request for quotations in late March. And then we received three very good proposals back. As the commission is aware, we evaluated those and uh, used a comprehensive scoring and, and analysis process for that. And this commission made its decision to choose the top ranked company on May 31st of this year. We were under a pretty tight procurement deadline to try to get the company contracted by the end of uh, June uh, to make sure that it qualified for this fiscal year so that we could use our appropriation towards the project and not lose it. Um, SITSD has helped us expedite the procurement process by serving as a pass-through. So SITSD actually holds the contract with the vendor, um, but they are doing that as a service to us as a pass-through and it's our project and we're administering the project. Um, I will note that um, through the procurement process that our project manager, Mr. Spiropoulos, and I um, worked vigorously and with our procurement uh, officer, Tina Limazand, and our chief legal counsel also assisted with that process. But it was really the efforts of our project manager that resulted in negotiating a $400,000 price decrease from what the commission had seen as the pricing when we made our decision on May 31st. I'm happy to report that we were able to secure the top ranked vendor and we were able to do so for approximately $400,000 less than the quoted price. So thank you, Mr. Spiropoulos and to the uh, members of Stratosphere Consulting who agreed to that a negotiation that uh, really made it a lot more palatable for us to move forward with that, with the project and to receive SITSD's uh, concurrence and approval of the, uh, the IT procurement request that had to go through them. So we met our June 30th deadline and we are here now to kick off the Ready Project in earnest. Um, we have Mr. Spiropoulos uh, traveled up from Texas to, to be with us this week. And we also have online the CEO of Stratosphere Consulting. Now we're we've purchased we're purchasing Pega the Pega platform Pega Systems platform. That's where Ready will be built. It will be using the Pega System platform. But the Stratosphere team are the team that will configure it and customize it and figure out how to make that work and set it up for us. So the bulk of the work in this project is with the development team. And they're um, in, in technical terms, these are known as the scrum people, the scrum team. And I asked about where that term comes from. It's actually a, a term of art that's used in the tech world quite frequently. And if you can envision, these are the people that are actually like in rugby, they got their head down, they're going for the ball, they're trying to figure things out, they're trying to move the ball forward, and it is a scrum. It's not just these two folks you see here today, and their CEO, Colin, who's online, but they have a support team of uh, 10 to 12 people that will be scrumming through this project and working with our project team to move that ball across the goal line for us and, and successfully implement this project. So I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Spiropoulos to say if few words and introduce our scrum team and um, take it from there. Mr. President, Commissioner Fielder, thank you for that um, very good summary. Uh, you make my job so much easier with those very detailed summaries. But yes, we are here today uh, to kick off the project, the Ready Project. This has um, been a lot of work uh, since you started prior to my coming on board and then when I came on board, we went through the discovery phase, as you mentioned. So for me, this is a big um, uh, uh, moment for us on the Ready Project, and I appreciate all the kind words. Um, so today we have with us um, in the room two representatives from Stratosphere, Mr. Anthony Greenman here and El Netherland. And on the uh, Zoom meeting, we have the CEO of Stratosphere, Mr. Colin Campbell, who wanted to be with us in person, but due to illness, couldn't make it. So uh, he will be um, joining us here on the presentation uh, briefly uh, through, the, uh, through the Zoom. 
Um, and so what I would like to do now is I'd like to turn it over to Elle and the Stratosphere team to go ahead with their presentation. Thank you. I apologize that they'll be on the screen right behind you, but for those that are joined via Zoom. Yeah, I think. I think but for those that have joined via Zoom, much better. Um, they will be able to see that there as well. Um, so I will actually hand the mic over to Colin Campbell to introduce us and get us started. Uh, sure, thank you. Um, uh, as uh, Steve noted, I, I had intended to uh, be there in person today, but uh, the world had other designs. So uh, I regret that I wasn't able to, to make it to Montana this week. Uh, I look forward to doing so in the future. My name is Colin Campbell. Uh, as noted, I'm, I am the CEO and founder of Status for Consulting. Uh, we have been implementing Pegasystems projects in the state and local government uh, space since our inception. Um, and we are, we are the largest state and local um, delivery organization for PEGA projects uh, in, in the country. Um, I'm really looking forward to, to this program. Um, uh, and if I can just throw in some, <laughs> some early remarks here. Um, I, the opportunity to provide a, a new uh, a, a, and truly exceptional experience uh, for both the suppliers and consumers of public services in the state is a really wonderful endeavor. Um, you don't always get these opportunities, uh, either on uh, you know, our side of, of, of things or on yours. Um, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. And I'm really happy with the team that we have. Uh, we have a very simple agenda today that's going to go over um, some of the details of this project at a high level, as, as aforementioned, um, including a quick project uh, preview slash overview and then a project overview. Uh, Obviously, if I've just introduced myself, um, we also, uh, as Steve noted, have Anthony Greenman, who will be handling a number of the technical aspects here, and Elle Netherland, who is going to be our lead project manager for this endeavor. All right, uh, let's, let's move on to a brief overview of, of what Pegasystems is, um, because I think it's important to, to note um, what we have in front of us in terms of our toolkit. Now, Pegasystems has been at the top of uh, intelligent business process management systems for over a decade. Uh, many of you may be aware, uh, others maybe not, uh, about business process management systems. Um, they are effectively systems that automate um, business processes. And there are a number of these. Uh, as we note in the uh, upper uh, left-hand side of this particular graph, this is a, a Gartner graph, the, the typical four-quadrant graph. And the upper right-hand side is uh, represents the leadership quadrant and Pegasystems is far and away uh, the leader in this category and has been for well over a decade. Um, why is this? Well, Peg is a low code consolidated platform and I'll speak more on the platform aspects of this in a moment, but it combines a full stack of the user experience, uh, business logic that you can configure so that uh, it, is, it is not up to individuals necessarily to, to implement the logic in their own, in their, in their heads as it were, but it is programmatically done in the system and can be used to uh, not only uh, make decisions in real time, but even branch out in different logical paths based on the situations uh, of the case in front of them. It also does routing, which is an important component of uh, process management getting the right work to the right people at the right time is critical for a timely resolution. Equally reporting uh, is a, an often underserved aspect of uh, many of these systems. The ability to get not only uh, real-time reporting that tells you exactly where you are in your processes and the number of things that are happening in your organizations and getting those overviews to effectively manage your organization, it is equally important to have the regulatory reporting aspects involved as well so that you can continue to show progress and, uh, and, and other aspects of the organization in a timely manner. Integration into backend systems is another key component. No, in, no information system in today's world lives in isolation. It needs to, to quote unquote talk with other aspects and systems. And Pegasystems as a platform has a very, very strong integration backbone that will let us do that. Uh, we can also configure service levels that promotes the timely resolution of work. Uh, for example, we can, a uh, use case might be after 30 days, 
Uh, if there's no response, we consider a case closed. Or after five days and no response, we can send them an email to remind them that they need to advance the case to the next stage and increase that case's uh, urgency. Uh, which uh, again, communication can be either by, by email, using your email servers directly or through SMS uh, or another a number of other uh, communication facilities. Last but not least, automation is key across all of this. We hire really good people to do really good work and automation helps strip away a lot of the administrivia that gets in the way of doing that true knowledge work. So we're going to focus on making sure we can automate the things that can be automated and leaving the true skilled work in the hands of your capable teams. Uh, Elle, I think we're good. Thanks. Uh, I mentioned before, as a platform, uh, PEGA is outstanding in, in automating processes. And it is a model-driven, low-code platform. And what that means is uh, there is almost a, a uh, WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get, drag and drop style of, of interface for many of these components, wherein no traditional coding is required, whether it be .NET or Java or Python or Ruby or so on. And this allows us to build applications much faster than traditional um, programming languages, uh, over six times faster, according to a CAC Gemini study uh, done just a few years ago. Moreover, we get to have reuse out of this platform. And this is, this is really a powerful aspect of the Pega Systems uh, environment that we would love to help um, establish here in, in the state, which is to say that at the enterprise level, the state level, you have certain resources. It might be, uh, it might be uh, an integration to a state level um, identity server or, or something to along those lines. It might be a, a database. It could be any number of things. Um, that can be housed at one level and then inherited at the next layer up where you can then configure that slightly to meet your needs and so on and so forth up through what we, we, we colloquially term the layer cake. So what this does is allow us to generalize policies and procedures at the enterprise and division layer and yet specialize those to the unique situations of each agency. And every subsequent layer gets to inherit and make use of those reusable components. So as a, a brief overview, uh, I'm, I have two uh, slides following here that uh, show some of the some of the product <laughs> capabilities that we demonstrated uh, when, when actually presenting our solution to the state originally. Uh, and so starting in the upper left, we can configure an integrated search uh, that uses um, something called Elasticsearch. And so it's similar to a type as you go search uh, that can search across uh, very complex data sets very quickly to allow you to find the right information very quickly. Uh, following down, we have dynamic menu options that not only have kind of a mnemonic uh, you know, icon on each, but then can uh, expand and you can select the menu option that meets the needs. These are also uh, in incidentally, can be configured to only show to the people that have access to them. There's a full role-based access paradigm behind each of these things so that the right people see the right information and have access to the right functionalities. We can have prioritized work lists. And a work list is a collection of work assigned to a particular user. And there are also things called work queues. And those work queues are items of work that are assigned to a particular group of individuals. So think of it as a common pool. And this helps us uh, best allocate the work to the right people, the people best capable of uh, resolving it. Uh, we can have any number of configurable dashboard components. One of the things that we added uh, in our demonstration was the current set of currently active service rates. Uh, we, we fabricated these. These aren't actually <laughs> the current average actual service uh, rates in, in play, but we can connect to systems and then display these uh, as, as required. In the lower right, we see uh, social style interactions. So we can actually have uh, internal and external conversations about uh, not only um, you know daily day-to-day -day activities that might be of interest, but within the context of specific cases, uh, dockets, and so on. I can also follow items of interest. 
uh, by a, a simple star uh, icon uh, on each of these particular. And in this instance, I was interested in a rate change uh, application. Um, and so these role specific portals, as I noted, can be tailored to the individual work needs of each um, user type or user group so that the focus of their work is uh, entirely, uh, uh, I guess, well, focused. <laughs> the scope of their work is focused within their portal so they have ready access to the most important things they need to do their job. Um, on top of all this, we have a customized look and feel throughout, as you note. Yeah. Thank you. Now, this shows you an actual work in progress uh, for a rate change application, which was the scenario we uh, actually demonstrated. And you can, at the top, you can see there's a configured process workflow. And, and it's important to note that this was configured specifically for your organization. It was not something uh, that we're trying to take that's out of the box that uh, we're trying to like conform your organization to. This is and can be your organization's process. And that's that's really important as a differentiator for the services that you provide. Uh, on the left, we have relevant case information uh, and uh, configurable content sections in, in the center. This is in uh, this particular instance, the step for discovery where we're adding documents. We can see in the upper right hand, there are uh, attachments that you can manage, uh, in, including uh, adding, deleting, and so on, update. We can identify stakeholders and interested parties as well, so that they get notified when key events occur. We can manage tag references, also known as folksonomy, which are uh, tags, which are just uh, words and phrases that are associated with that particular case or, or set of cases. Uh, lastly, we have a fully automated audit trail in history so that we know exactly when uh, each major step of the, the um, process occurred, who performed the action, and, uh, and a description of that action as well. This can actually be extended right into the, the field level so we can know who changed what field when if that's a, a need. All right. Uh, I know this, uh, this really you know, speaks to Stratford Consulting uh, and, and Pega Systems here, but I, I wanted to make sure that I, I am not remiss in uh, mentioning as well SHI, who is a, a a, a global partner um, and with decades of experience in the state of Montana. And we're really happy to be able to work with them uh, within the context of this engagement. Uh, Pegasystems themselves are the software vendor. We have exceptional and long relationships uh, with Pega as, as the vendor. I, in fact, worked for Pega for a number of years uh, in delivery. So uh, we have a long standing relationship there. As far as Stratosphere Consulting uh, goes, we are the primary delivery partner. We are who will be building this system for you. Um, and, and as I mentioned, we're very excited to do that. Uh, we are a specialized partner uh, in, across a number of dimensions in PEGA due to our experience, uh, some of which I live here. I will, I'll, I'll spare you reading them, <laughs> reading them out. Um, but uh, you know, in, in closing on my part, and we're going to hand this over to Elle to discuss some of the, the actual project pieces. Um, I. I like to approach projects with three goals in mind. And, and the first being uh, is that we want to make agencies more efficient, right? That that should be table stakes, right? That uh, hopefully isn't, uh, <laughs> you know, shouldn't wow anyone. That, that, that's table stakes. But secondly, I want, I want to help make work more meaningful. Through those automation of processes, um, we can actually make the employees and, and staff members that you have um, happier to come to work because they're doing the work for which they're truly hired. Um, and, and, and we're automating those things that kind of get in the way of doing that sometimes. Um, and lastly, and equally importantly, the engagement with your constituency needs to be impactful. It needs to be easy. It needs to be seamless. We want them to be able to actually go into the system, understand what needs to be done um, and provide clear and transparent um, engagements throughout. So. Uh, that's that's what I had for this morning. I appreciate your time um, and, and thank you. Thank you, Colin. Um, I'll pick it up from here and just give a very high level introduction to kind of how we're going to run the project itself. I know that we'll have opportunities to discuss in more detail and I'm happy to tackle any questions, but I also want to be respectful of the amount of time that we've got for this morning. 
Um, so overall high level, I think Commissioner Fielder, you actually did a great job of covering a lot of the information that I was going to introduce. Um, so I will just add in here um, that we are going to be working extremely closely with members of the commission. When she described that scrum, we're going to be pulling people into that scrum with us to help us get that ball across the line and make sure that we're building the ball exactly the way that we want to and that everyone's built and bought in on that and that we're taking it across the right line at the right time. Um, so I'm actually going to skip this first slide. One thing that will be somewhat unique about how we do this project is that we're not going to build everything in the system and then deploy it all at once. Um, with the methodology that we're using, we're going to build components and go ahead and put that out there and let folks start using it. That gives us the ability to start to get feedback early, right? We don't want to build for 13 months, put something out the door and have people go, gosh, I really don't like this. I'd rather know that on day one. So we're going to be working closely with the team as we go throughout, but then really going and putting things out for system users to really get in there and touch and feel and play with while we're still here to react to that feedback. So that's something that we're really excited to do with you guys. And we'll be working with, um, with the rest of the commission as well to figure out the exact order that we'll be building those components. But notionally, what we're looking at right now is likely six different releases over the course of the next 13 or so months to really get this thing across that finish line. Um, for as far as kind of our roles are concerned, uh, I think those have already been covered at this point. But like I mentioned before, it's going to be a very integrated team. You know, we're not going to be off in Texas building these things on our own in a silo. We're going to be very integrated with the team. We'll be talking to members of the commission daily. Um, it's very transparent, very collaborative in the process that we're going to be using. Uh, and with that, I would really like to, to thank you, Mr. President and commissioners for having us here today to give this overview. Um, Anthony and I will actually be in here in town today and tomorrow. So if you'd like to, um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer those here or to catch up with you all later. Thank you, El and Anthony and Steve. So commissioners, I just, I'd like to note a couple of things. One, um, this, this technical slides that we went through just a few minutes ago that Colin presented, you know, with the actual look of what the dashboard is going to look like and that type of thing. Okay. Um, we saw that for what, 10 minutes or so he presented that maybe. And just imagine sitting through and watching four hours solid of that type of thing, because that's what we did. That's what our team at the PSC did with the three different vendors that made proposals. It was four hours of intensive review of what the system looks like, what it can do and all that. So um, the, the amount of work that went in this by staff was phenomenal and uh, by our project manager to manage all of that for us and help us um, end up scoring. And I think we made a really good decision with this company, uh, with this product. Um, I really like, I think you're going to notice, the commissioners are going to notice that you're not going to get a gazillion notifications from Eddie every day. Once we start using this system, you'll get the notifications that you need and that you want. You'll be able, be able to look at your screen and you'll have the information you need and want there instead of some massive data, database where you've got to try to search through, you know, thousands of dockets to find what you're looking for. So it's going to make our jobs a lot easier. Basically, the notebook that we have before us in paper, that's going to be all accessible for our regular work. Work, um, at a click of a button. And of course, you'll be able to print it out if you want to print it out, but it will all be there. So you'll have it when you're on the go. You'll have it when you're here. Uh, whenever you want to refer to it, you don't have to carry your notebook around with you everywhere. And um, I will also note that this process that we've gone through is basically opposite of what has been done before with um, the way we were steered into just using SITSD and just having them kind of build it in a vacuum. And um, this is this is going to be, a, I think, a really successful process for us because we're doing it right this time, and we've uh, the legislature has appropriated the funds to allow us to do it right. They've encouraged us to do it right. The commission's been on board with that. The staff has been on board with it, and I think we've got a great team to help us get there. Um, and I, one other thing I like to also note, and that is that this morning, um, our state CIO, Kevin Gilbertson, he sent a, a note apologizing that he can't come to the uh, kickoff meeting that's going to happen right after this today, but he is sending a representative and he does have his eye on this project and he does want to look at the applicability of this project across the state because it is the type of a platform that can be used by other agencies and, um, you know, if, if this goes as well as it looks like it's going to go, I could see other agencies adopting this. As Commissioner Pinochi, you raised when we talked about this issue earlier, you know, can we 
come up with a system that can serve uh, more, more than just this agency. And I think, yes, we can. It is expandable. It's adaptable. And it can be customized for us. And then someone else can take the other um, base components and, and customize it for their needs and that type of thing. So I think it's got amazing potential for our state. And I think it's going to be really good for our agency. So I'm looking forward to working with this team. I appreciate the commission's support and our legislative committee's support to help us um, move forward with this project. And um, the timeline that we have, um, it's a draft timeline right now, but it looks like the customer service component will be first and that customer service group um, will be using this system by this fall. Okay. And then we'll go into legislative tracking and rulemaking, and then we can be using that system before the legislative session hits. So we can be using the system for that before uh, 2023 and as we go into 2023, and then we'll go into other um, functions of what this agency does and just kick out bit by bit in modules or in releases um, the different work units of the agency. So we don't have to wait for a year until it's done, but it will probably be about a year before it's all completely done. But we'll we'll be able to start using it within a few months, at least parts of it. So thanks for being here today, and thanks, commissioners. I, if um, if you have questions, I'd say stick around for the little reception afterwards. We're going to take like a ten minute break after we adjourn, have a little reception. You can talk with the folks one on one, and and those that are here from I think we've got some folks from legislative committees and from SITSD that can also um, visit feel free to visit and ask questions. And I know you've got a presentation during that meeting as well, where you're going to go a little bit deeper, but let's try not to go too deep because we're going to want a chance for everyone to, to talk and do some Q and A as well. So thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Commissioner Fielder. And thank you for your work on this project. And thanks to the PSC team that was involved with the project as well. And thank you for coming today. I'll just close with an announcement. Our next um, commission business meeting will be Tuesday, July 26, 2022. We will not have a commission meeting uh, next Tuesday. And seeing no further business to come before the commission, I will adjourn this meeting. It is now 10.23 a.m. We'll reconvene for the reception. Um, planning meeting around 10.30 or shortly thereafter. Thank you.